All right, hello everybody. Uh, this is going to be an update video for my ES6.io course, as well as I'm just gonna throw it up on YouTube because I know this is a big pain point that people have um, in general for getting prettier in ESLint set up with their VS code uh, in a way that just works and you don't have to have any, any tiers or anything like that. So I went ahead and created an ESLint config uh, that does it all in one, and that it sort of a, has a set of base rules underneath it. It's actually based on Airbnb's rules. Um, and then you can configure it out from there if you do, do or don't like any of the settings. So let's jump into it. For this one, I want to do uh, it absolutely from scratch. So um, there's no uh, files or anything you need to, to get this up and running. So I just have an empty directory right here. And the first thing we need to do is just type npm init. And um, I just like to use dash y. And then what that will do is it will just scaffold out uh, a package.json. I'm going to open that up in my editor here. Next, let's just uh, make a, I don't know, code.js. Then we need a .eslintrc file. That's going to hold all of our settings. Then we'll go into our code.js and let's write some code that will be fixed and formatted. So let's write a function called say hi, and maybe put a space there and like don't put a space here. And inside of here, let's say var age equals 10, no space there. We'll say const, uh, maybe here we'll, we'll take in a name, put two spaces there. This is hopefully driving you crazy. Um, here we'll say const age is equal to 12. Uh, what other kinds of terrible things can we do here? Um, let's do an array var things is equal to square bracket. Cool. Let's use double quotes here and put some spaces there. All right. I think that's, that's about good. So, uh, we have done a couple things here. Um, first we've written some, uh, formatting errors here where it, it's not bad JavaScript, but, um, it's, it's formatted not to my liking. Uh, second, we have this like variable here. Maybe we'll change that to a let. Um, it doesn't get used, so that's an issue. Um, it's never reassigned, so why is it a let and not a const? So these are just things that uh, are, are possible issues that will come up. Now, what I like to use is I like to use ESLint, and ESLint is going to give me errors about the quality of my code, things that could potentially cause bugs down the road. And then Prettier, what it's going to do is Prettier just cares about the actual formatting of the code. Things like these spaces shouldn't be here, or this should be a const, and like, why is there a whole bunch of space right here? And uh, why are you using double quotes and, and single quotes being mixed? Things like that, right? Um, so Prettier is going to fix all of the two. Now, setting up these tools isn't the easiest thing on earth. And uh, setting up two separate tools for every single project that you have can also be a little bit of a pain. So I'm here to show you this ESLint config that I've created where um, it's an ESLint config, but it also has a plugin called Prettier, which means that it's going to fix both the um, issues that are formatting as well as do all of the regular ESLint stuff that we are uh, we know and love. So how do we get it up and running? I'm going to show you how to get it up and running for each of your projects. So uh, I've got the docs right here. I'm going to open up my terminal clear that out. So again, we've got our code.js, we have our package JSON, and we've got our uh, .eslint. That's a hidden file. That's why it's not showing up there. There's some flag I need to pass. Uh, so next, we need to run npx install pure depths dash dash dev eslint config west Boston. And what this is going to do is that uh, this is a package that I've published to npm called eslint config west boss. Uh, but in order for this package to work, it actually needs a couple other packages to, to actually work as well. And it needs eslint. Um, it needs the Airbnb config. Um, it needs a plugin for using ESLint inside of script tags in HTML files. It needs the plugin for Prettier. It needs the uh, accessibility plugin that Airbnb needs. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I got some stuff on React hooks here, which I imagine will be folded into the Airbnb eventually. Uh, we need Prettier. So all of these things are required, but they're not part of uh, NPM installing my package. They're peer dependencies. So um, the easiest way to install peer dependencies is to use this new NPX 
uh, thing we have. NPX comes when you install Node. Um, it's actually part of NPM, but it's just for running scripts. And it's awesome because if I just paste that in here and we open up our package JSON, you can see it's actually going to install all of the things that are needed and necessary. Um, if you wanted to globally install this, you just pass the dash dash global flag instead of dash dash dev. Um, sometimes I'll do that. I, I do do that on my own system so that I can have a global install covers everything I write and then I do it on a per project basis as well. So there we go. I've installed all of my dev dependencies that are needed for this thing to work. Um, next thing we need to do is to uh, actually go into our ESLint, our C file, open it up, a set a curly bracket and simply just say extends. That's in quotes and it's going to extend. I like to give extends an array of items. You can give it just a single string, but uh, if you want to extend multiple packages, you totally could in this case. And we're just going to extend Westboss. And um, it knows from the naming convention that's ESLint config Westboss, just that that part is not necessary uh, and needed in there. Then we'll go ahead and make some uh, commands that run in our package JSON. This step is not uh, totally necessary if you set it up with VS Code. Um, but I'm just going to show you how to do it anyway. So we'll go into our scripts here. I don't have a test, so I'm going to remove that one. And we're just going to call this a lint. And in here, we're just going to say eslint dot. Uh, and then I'm going to make another one that's called lint colon fix. And we will pass the dash dash fix flag. Um, and that's going to be the important one that we have here. So give that a save. Now, if we go in here and we run npm, let's go back to our code. Actually, let's watch it here. So npm run lint colon fix. You see it's running off. Oh, boom. You see all of that stuff happen. Um, what happened is that the spacing issues all fixed themselves. Uh, the fact that I use let here fixed itself. Um, I use double quotes here that that fixed itself as well. Um, and any other weird formatting issues that I have, especially things like indentation and and all of that, that used to be uh, such a sticking point for me. I'd always tell my students, make sure you indent your code properly and spend time on what your code looks like. All of that doesn't matter anymore because Prettier will just automatically format it for you. Um, so that's good. And then you can also see um, there are some ESLint errors. These are things that are not, not fixable because... Um, it's just the way that you've written your code, but it is warning us that I said, like, say hi, you made this function here, um, but you never defined it. Um, and that's the no unused vars uh, property. Um, same with the warning here. Uh, name is never used. You get the point, right? These are all of the, the issues that we're getting here. No shadow. So I'm making a variable here called age, which also has an, uh, a variable up here called age. So uh, if some of these issues are um, you think, huh, I, I would like to turn those off. All you need to do is to go into your um, ESLint RC. You pop a rules on here. And then you simply just give it the name of the, the rule that you'd like to turn off. And you can look these up on ESLint's website to see what they mean and, and, and their, their meaning behind it. But uh, if you want to turn it off, you set it to zero and give it a save. And now if I were to rerun that, it should complain. There we go. It complains a whole lot less because I've turned it off. I can turn it to one um, and it's simply just going to turn them into warnings and I can turn it into two, which is simply going to turn them into actual errors. So that's how you can override it. If you're curious what all of the rules are, you can go to my ESLint in here. You can take a look at um, like I've turned off the no debugger. Uh, no alert, um, no await in loop. So these are things that Airbnb, because I'm extending Airbnb, um, they've set forth and that I disagree or it's just not the way that I, I code. So I've turned them off myself. Or um, in, in this case, um, no unused variables. I said that's, that is a warning one, but um, if the variable name is response or next or ha starts with error, then ignore that because that's often I use those in Express all the time. And um, if even if I'm not using them, I might use them in the future. I like to just have them in the uh, the function signature there. So that's all of the settings that I have inside of there. Um, the last thing that you probably want to 
uh, take a look at is how do you get it up and running with the VS code? So I have the instructions in, in the readme in here as well. Um, so first thing you need to do is install the ESLint package. So it's called ESLint. It's the most popular one with 18 million installs. You probably won't miss it. Um, so go ahead and install that. Um, and then if you, uh, this is where it gets a little bit weird, but these are the settings that you need to have in order to get it to work because um, by default, VS Code tries to beautify your code for you. Um, and we don't necessarily want to use the built-in beautifier in VS Code. We want to use this new ESLint and prettier. So um, you want to go to your settings. Um, and click on the curly bracket here. Th these are all your settings here and you can use a GUI for them, but these are settings are way easier if you simply just click on the curly bracket and that opens your settings.json. Um, and you just wanna set these here. So editor format on save is set to true. So every single time that you save your file, it's going to try to format it for you. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna turn it off for JavaScript. Why? Because the next one is that we're actually not using the built-in VS Code formatting, we're going to be using the ESLint autofix on save. Um, and that's part of the ESLint plugin. Um, finally, you do not, if you have the prettier plugin installed, I personally don't, um, but some people have the prettier plugin installed. And if you do have it, because we're not using prettier directly, we're using prettier through my ESLint package. Um, you need to go ahead and disable it for JS and yeah, you don't just remove it entirely because a lot of people use prettier for things like CSS and HTML and there's even like a PHP plugin coming out for prettier. So simply just disable it for JavaScript because we are running that through ESLint. Um, once that's up and running, um, you should be able to just go in here and start writing some bad code again. And then every single time that you save it, it will just automatically format it and it should pick up based on the settings that are in your ESLint settings that we have here. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting ESLint and Prettier up and running. Um, so that's why I've just bundled it up into this nice little, um, nice little extends here. Uh, if you do or don't like any of the settings, just remember that you can overwrite any of the settings that you have here. Lots of documentation. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think and I'll see you later.